Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to cover how to use our Variance Overlap tab, uh, especially D to R and then just the R pages. So let's start with D to R. For some reason, let's say you want to convert a traditional D statistic into a correlation coefficient so that maybe your, all of your statistics are in correlations. And so what we've done here is allowed you to convert independent D to R. Converting dependent D to R is a little bit trickier. So right now all we're covering um, is using a sample one when there's two samples. So let's say I have JASP output and I have uh, Cohen's D for that. So I can fill in that from here because JASP was the only one out of the three that we've covered, uh, SPSS and SAS, that automatically will allow you to get D. So if I'm looking at output, that's probably the only one. I have a sample size of four in each group because this is a very simple study. So I can enter negative 1.88 and four and four. Alpha remembers our type one error criterion. So that's gonna calculate the R statistic for us and give us a confidence interval in R. So the first thing it does is give us the interpretation of R, which is the amount of variance accounted for in the DV by the IV or IVs. It gives us the translation for R, which is a rather big correlation because this is a big effect size. But if you look at that confidence interval, it really tells the story of a small sample. So the confidence interval is really wide. It says our confidence interval does include zero. So we would probably conclude that this correlation is similar to zero. And then here's the interesting part. So it gives us the, of uh, the effect size, the effect size as R and the confidence interval, but it also gives you the uh, effect size as R squared, which is literally R times R, <laughs> and the confidence interval for R squared. The confidence interval for R is calculated on Fisher's R to Z transform, and this is a normal distribution confidence interval. The confidence interval for R squared is calculated on the F distribution. And so this is a non-normal confidence interval, meaning it's not going to be equal on each side. And so it says that our confidence interval includes NA, so it can't figure out the lower limit for this, probably because the uh, sample size really is too small to get a good number feel from. So when that happens, it appears the effect size is similar to zero, which is, mimics the results from the correlation effect size. So we're giving you either option here. So you can report this as little r with no squaring and their effects and the confidence interval or um, uppercase r uh, squared uh, with the confidence interval based on the non-central f distribution. It also calculates t for you, which is t on the r statistic. And it says that p is greater than alpha, so this is probably not significant. To see the code in the background, so this is what uh, is being calculated for d to r, and then it calculates the formula from r to get t. And so we don't have r to d at the moment because it doesn't quite work right, so uh, this will only work if you want to calculate from Cohen's d into r. Now, the other thing you can do is go directly to r, and let's say I have some output. Now, they all look very similar, so I've got output for SPSS here. Now let's say I want to calculate the confidence interval at R from um, this correlation table. So I'm going to pick my correlation here, which is 0.183. I'm going to fill that in. The other thing you want to look at is the sample size, which is here. It's 369, so we have a pretty big sample. And we want to pick our alpha, which for fun this time we're going to try 0.01. And hit calculate. And that is, uh, it's going to give you the same interpretation of its, as effect size because it's the same effect size. So we've got R here and we've got a 99% confidence interval since I picked 0.01. This confidence interval does not include zero, so it's probably different from zero. And it also gives you the confidence interval for R squared, which is 0.03. So 0.18 times 0.18. Um, so one thing you'll notice here is that this does say zero, zero, and then it says your confidence interval does not include zero. It probably does not include zero in a larger precision. So this confidence interval is really 0 0.00, and then there's numbers later. Um, and so that's why these seems, two things seem to mismatch, is because there's probably greater than zero out in a lower decimal point. Uh, it also calculates T for you and tells you uh, if T would be considered significant given alpha. 
So looking at the code in the background, uh, the only thing that's really being calculated is the formula for t. The formula for r squared is r times r. And it also shows you how you could use this in r if you were interested. So that's how you use our two r statistics. So d to r and r, um, where it will give you both the confidence interval for r based on the normal Fisher's r to z transform and the confidence interval for r squared based on a non-central f distribution.